So how are sigma squared, which is the noise power, the signal to noise ratio and the bit error rate related in the matched filter in digital communications? I'm going to do a little bit of derivation, then I'll show an example, and then I'll link the example back to the Gaussian bit error rate curves that we're familiar with in uh, textbooks. So let's go right back to basics and think of what we've got. We've got a signal plus noise in continuous time. So this is a signal waveform that noise is coming from the receiver and it's going into a filter. So what we're going to do first of all in digital communications is put this into a filter because we have to make a sample. So you make a sample by uh, adding up the energy that comes from the signal and of course plus the noise which you can't avoid and you do that in a filter. Then you sample the output of that filter at the time that equals your digital sampling time when you're sending data and then you put that out into a detector. Now we're going to call this Y at capital T. So Y is going to be the output of this receiver filter sampled uh, which you're going to sample at time capital T. Okay, so this is the receiver and this happens in all digital communication systems. So here's our noise which is white Gaussian noise and we're going to just, uh, if you're not too sure on what that is, we've got videos on the channel that explore that in some detail, so check out the links below. Okay, so here's the formula for Y at capital T. So it equals the integral, and just bear with me through these formulas, we're going to get to an example in a minute, um, but it's the added up over time, the integral, because this is a convolution, so you're putting a signal into a filter, which is a convolution. And again, there's lots of videos on convolution on the channel. So here's the formula, you've got your signal convolved with the channel, plus your noise convolved with the channel. And I'm going to call this here Y subscript S for the signal part of our of our uh, received um, and filtered uh, signal. So it's a sampled version because it's at capital T. So that's YS, that's that component. And I'm going to call this one here Y subscript N for the noise component of that sample that we're going to use this sample to decide whether the signal was a digital one or a digital zero or whatever it else it is for multi-level signaling as well. It all holds for multi-level signaling. Okay, so let's let's explore this noise component and we're going to think about this first thing in our title here which is sigma squared. So this is the power of the noise. So sigma squared is defined as being, so here's our noise component at the output of our filter and sampler, uh, the noise component here. So the square of that give and take the expected value because it's random. So the expected value of the square of this gives you the noise power. Okay, now I've just written this here with some dots in here because this formula here, because it's an addition of multiple terms, you therefore have to, when you take the square, you have to write the first one out times the second one. For example, you might, if this, if, if this was a bit more basic, if this YNT was just two terms, A plus B, you'd have to write A plus B times A plus B. Um, you couldn't just do a squared plus b squared. Uh, it's basic uh, high school mathematics. But it's when you see it as integrals, it's sometimes a little harder to see. But that's the reason why you've got one term with a tor one, so this term here, but with it integrated with tor one, multiplied by this term, but with tor two. Okay, now you can work that through. Uh, I've written it out here. The important thing is that you can collect the integrals together out the front and the expectation comes inside the integrals and you can write it in this form here where you're collecting the noise terms. Okay, now this is an expected value because H is not random, it's not inside the expectation. H is the filter that you're putting at your receiver. Okay, so, so this term here, expected value of noise at one time times noise at another time, well, if the noise is independent, which it is, then this equals zero unless tor1 equals tor2. So this, and when it does equal that, we often term that give that, that value n0 on 2. Okay, so you're probably familiar with seeing n0 on 2. And now we're seeing that the power of the noise equals n0 on 2, which is from the flat spectrum of white noise, uh, but it's now multiplied by this term here, which comes about because that noise went through that filter. So at the output, the noise having gone through that filter, it now has this power here, which is n0 on 2 times this term here. And this term, of course, depends on 
the filter. Okay, so let's think about the matched filter now that we're looking at in particular. So in the matched filter, the result is that the filter you should use to maximize the signal to noise ratio, and there's another video on the channel on how it's maximized if you want more information on that, but that filter is a complex conjugate of a time reversed version of the signal waveform. We won't go into all the details of that now, but just you have to believe me on that just for here, because uh, I want to make a few points based on that. So now if we take this and substitute it into here, well, what's H of capital T minus Tor? Well, H of capital T minus Tor is, well, we just take the capital T minus Tor and substitute it in where there's T here. So where there's T, we'll, so now we'll see S star of capital T like this, minus, and then we're replacing capital T minus Tor replacing into where that T is, so we'll get minus capital T plus T, the capital T's cancel, and the, this term in this integral here is just the complex conjugate of the signal that you are sending, and that's the result for the match filter. So for the match filter, the noise power equals N naught divided by two times the time integral of the square of the complex conjugate of the signal. Okay, so this is the noise power of the noise that's coming out of our sampler. Okay, so now that we've got this and we understand this noise power here, the noise has been filtered, let's look at an example and think about the signal to noise ratio and the bit error rate. Okay, so I'm going to draw an example here. Let's think of on the right hand side this example here. So let's say we're going to send a waveform which is binary pulse amplitude modulation. So that's what we're going to consider first of all. So binary uh, binary PAM. So we're going to send a signal that's got a, a height of A. So this is our signal. We're going to send a height of A for a length of time T for to represent a digital one. And we'll send a negative A uh, t for a length of T to represent a digital zero. So this is our ST. Okay, so let's just make a few observations about this. The energy in ST is now the square of the voltage times uh, times the time. So it's because you're adding up the, the so the, pe the power is A squared times the time gives you the energy. So A squared times T. Okay, so that's what we've got here for the energy of our symbol, sometimes called ES, capital ES. Okay, so energy of our symbol is A squared times T. That's the first thing to note. The second thing to note is, well, it should be familiar to you, and if, if not, again, there's videos on the channel about this, but when you put a square waveform into a filter, which is a match filter here, so the, the response is a time reverse square, you're going to be convolving one square with another square. So the square waveform here, convolved with the square waveform of the impulse response of the match filter, is going to give you an output, which is going to be a triangle. Okay, and so you should be familiar with that, or it's easy to confirm that. So this is t and 2t, and the height of that triangle is a squared times t. And you can uh, confirm that for yourself uh, by some simple uh, convolution, or there's, as I say, there's videos on the channel. Okay, now this is, this is, so this is the output from the signal component of your inputted waveform. So this is now ys of t, out that we're plotting here. So I'm plotting y s of t, little t, as a function of time t. And so at the sampling time, which is capital T, that's the value. So that value there is y s of capital T. Okay, so that's this value here. In your received y t, that in this example, that's the value is a squared times t. Okay, so the uh, what do we have there? Well, the power of the received signal now so this is our received signal after this sampler. That's the value we've got. We've got a squared times t. So the so the SNR. Oh, and let's just make one more point here. In this case here, where we've got st like this, what is our noise power? So in this case, uh, sigma squared is going to be from this function here. Well, what is this? What is this equation here? So the integral from zero to t of s squared, in this case it's real, so the complex conjugate uh, doesn't matter to us. So now we've got, take the square of a, so s, s t squared is a squared, we're integrating it from zero to t, so this equals, this term here equals a squared times t. So our power of our noise is n naught on two times a squared t. 
Okay, so here we've got our output of our sampler in a digital communications. If this is the signal that we're sending, then the output is going to have a power which is uh, a squared t squared, and the noise power is n naught on two a squared t because this is the noise power that we calculated when you put noise into this filter here, this matched filter, you get this noise. Okay, so the SNR, let's write that down. So the SNR, and this is again up in the title that we're looking at. So the SNR at the output, so I'm gonna put a little O there. So the SNR at the output of our match filter receiver equals, well, it's the power of this, so it's this thing squared. So it's A squared T all squared, divided by the noise power, which is N naught divided by two times A squared T. And of course, one of the a squared t's cancel, so you're left with a squared t on n naught on two. Uh, and this also can be written uh, as two times e s divided by n naught. Okay, so this is something that we're familiar with. Now, let's look now finally at the bit error rate. So how does, do these relate to the bit error rate? Well, this gives us, these numbers here give us this uh, Gaussian curve, uh, and I'm going to try to squeeze it in here so I can put one in below it. Uh, so on a PDF, so this is now the PDF that I'm plotting here, the PDF of Y capital T um, as a function of the values that it can take, uh, is going to be, you're either going to have, and this is the, you'll, you'll see, you rec should recognize it in a minute, you're either going to have A squared times T coming out from the signal, so this is A squared times T, or you're going to have minus A squared times T. And then there's going to be, for the PDF, because it's Gaussian noise, that's this component here, plus this component here is the Gaussian noise, so there's a Gaussian distribution over that A squared T, if it's forgiven it's a positive, and there's a Gaussian over this one, given that it was a negative that was sent, or a digital one and a digital zero. And now you can see you can work out, of course, the bit error rate by conditioning on a one being sent and working out that area under the curve, under the Gaussian curve there, will give you the bit error rate, and you're familiar with that. Uh, this here, of course, is the variance that we've just worked out up here, which is the n naught onto a squared t. Now this picture here is slightly different from, the picture looks the same, but the labeling is slightly different from what you probably see in the textbooks. So I just wanna do one more step to convince you and to show you how this relates in this example, using this example, to show you how this relates to what's in the textbooks, where in the textbooks when they talk about this, they often don't, uh, they often sort of gloss over this noise power uh, aspect coming out from this filter here, at least in the early introductory when they first introduce uh, binary PAM and bit error rates. Uh, and they'll show you a different picture. The picture almost looks the same. I'll show you what the picture is, and, and this might make sense to you now. Uh, the picture almost looks identical, except that the values here are the square root of ES and the square root, or the minus the square root of ES uh, with the Gaussians over the top. And they have, in this case, the variance uh, is the variance here, they will, they will often say that this variance here is, this variance here is n naught divided by two. Uh, so that's what they'll, they'll say. So how does this picture here, that's in the textbooks where this is the energy, square root of the energy, and the variance is n naught on two, how does this one match up with this picture here, where we've got a squared times t, which is not the square root of the energy, it is actually the energy, and the variance here equals uh, n naught on two times a squared t, times the energy. And the answer is, it's just a simple scaling that takes you from one to the other. So if we scaled yt over here on both sides by multiple, or by dividing by the square root of a squared uh, t in, in this particular example case, uh, by scaling the power, or by scaling the, the voltage here by the square root of a squared t, then uh, we would get uh, the terms here wouldn't be a squared t anymore, they would be the square root of a squared t. So what do I mean? Maybe I need to just write it out a little below, move this down here just like this. Uh, so if we take our yt and if we scale it by the square root of a squared t, uh, by dividing it by that, then we will get um, that 1 divided by the square root of a squared t times ys of t. 
uh, plus, of course, uh, 1 divided by the square root of a squared t y n of t. So all we've done is to scale our original equation, and that's, that's no problem, that's just a voltage scaling, and if we scale both sides, it still holds. Uh, and then we can see this term here, instead of being plus and minus a squared t, uh, which is what it would be here, uh, now it's going to be, because divided by this, is going to be obviously plus or minus, plus or minus the square root of a squared t, which is the same as plus or minus the square root of e s. Okay, so by scaling by that value, we get the square root of ES, which you're familiar with in the textbooks. Uh, and then in the noise case, well, you're scaling uh, this term here, and this gives you, you can, should, you can work through the equation here just by substituting it into this equation here. This gives you a variance which equals n naught divided by 2. So, sorry, that's not, that should be squared, of course, the variance squared. Um, okay, so uh, these are just differ by this particular scaling. And it's often the case that the textbooks, uh, some textbooks sort of ignore this or they, they don't make this explicit anyway, and so it's often confusing because you see the square root of the energy of the symbol here, but and yet when you look at this in terms of the, this particular example, and you clearly are going to be sampling a squared times t, and it can be confusing, particularly because a squared times t is also the energy of the signal. So the signal going in has an energy of a squared t. The signal coming out is sampled after the matched filter has an energy of a squared t squared. And that's an important difference between the input and the output of a filter. And hopefully this helps to link up the power of the noise with the signal to noise ratio with the bit error rate for this matched filter. Uh, and the derivations that you often see in textbooks. So if this video has helped you to uh, understand these links, please give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the links in the information below the video where there's a web page which has all of the categorized videos on the channel and you can easily find the other videos that you might be looking for.